Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Particle Follow Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. And we've got an emitter and a render set up. And before I jump into the Follow Node, I'm going to set up my emitter. And we're going to go to Region. And we're going to change this to All. For Styles, we're going to use Blob. And let's change our size to say four. And uh, let's just give it a color. Nice purple. And let's go to the controls and we're going to keyframe our number. So we got a uh, consistent number of particles going across the entire time. We're going to change this to 60, keyframe it. Go to our next frame and shut it off. For velocity, let's change this to like 0.25 maybe. See how that's going. Yeah, it's too fast. Let's do 0 0.025. There we go. That's a nice, nice velocity. And let's add a P turbulence. So, and you know what we forgot to do? Change our lifespan. So let's jump back and we will change our lifespan to 300. So now we've got them going across the entire time. And let's bump this turbulence down a little bit to say, do a 0 0.05. There we go, that'll work. So the particle follow node, what the particle follow node doesn't quite do what you think it would do. You would think it would give you something for these particles to just plain follow, but it really doesn't do that. It adds a spring back effect that kind of goes back and forth on a uh, path. So let's go ahead and add the P follow and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the pfollow node has controls, conditions, and regions, just like all other uh, nodes. We're gonna jump into region first. You've got your typical all Bezier bitmap cube, line, mesh, rectangle, and sphere. We're gonna go with the cube today. And we're going to move this. Whoop. You notice we've got hey, another little gizmo here. This is for your follow direction, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's move our cube over and let's extend this beyond and let's fit this in there correctly and let's make it a little wider and let's change our depth way up. So what this region is doing, this is where it's going to affect your follow or where it's going to spring back from. So whatever you have your region set, this is where your particles are actually going to be affected from. And right now we have it on ignore region, but we can put when entering the region. So if we hit play, you can see our particles are bouncing back using this directional node as the direction of its bounce back or it's spring. So if we come into our controls, you have spring and you have dampening. And what your spring does is your spring causes it to move back and forth along the path. And the spread of the spring increases over the life of the particle, depending on the distance between the particles and the actual object, the follow object, which is your little gizmo up here. So if we increase the spring, that means it's going to speed it up. If we lower, it's going to decrease that speed. So you can see these particles coming back. So if we play now, you can see it's not going as fast. You've also got dampening, which kind of helps you attenuate the spring action. So lower settings will offer like less resistance in higher settings, more resistance. So 
So in order to get the look you're kind of looking for, you just play with the spring and the dampen and you can change your gizmo. And we can also, if we go to our gizmo and start here, we can keyframe these positions and we can go to the end and change our position. And if we go back and play it, you can see it's animated and our particles are changing its spring back position based on where that gizmo is. So that is the P follow node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.